And then there's actors you stop. And the actors you must stop beyond all actors is the one and only Sidney Poitier. So I drag my shaking, scared to death friend, white as a sheet, I might add. I walk her up to him and I say, Mr. Poitier, my name is Terry Harden. And he looks down and he smiles because he's a tall man. And he says, well, hello. I said, she is off. She, who cannot speak, is my friend, Debbie. Debbie, come over here. Debbie, smile. Debbie, say hi. Debbie, breathe. I mean, guys, you know how that is. Now we meet someone you really like, right? But I grew up in Hollywood. I stood in unemployment lines with a lot of these people. I'm not saying I stood in unemployment lines with Sidney Poitier, but I will walk up to anybody. In fact, I don't have a problem with walking up to people so much that if President Obama was out smoking a cigarette, I'd walk up to him and tell him he needed to quit smoking cigarettes. I'm not kidding, okay? So I walk up to, I walk up to Mr. Poitier and I tell him, she just loves you, and so do I. Now, you may know that I said, Sidney Poitier, you don't know this about me, but I am a biracial child. I'm mixed. And you did a little movie called uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And the girl you married, I, is like my mother, and you are like my dad. You are so much like my dad. And as a little girl seeing a movie like this, when I had been bullied about being mixed or looking the way I do, was a ray of hope in my life. And I want to thank you for that. And he looked down and he said, well, wow, it's good to know that it, it affected you this way. And I said, but before we get into any kind of long conversation, there are 20 women about to come around this corner here that are going to descend upon you like vultures, and if you'd like to go, we understand. And Sidney Portier leaned in, and Portier leaned in, and he said, "Why would any man run away from twenty women?" <laughs> Isn't that great? So, as the women came around, he stood and talked to all of us for twenty minutes, and it was a joyful experience. And Cindy told me one thing that I've never forgotten. And it was so lovely to get this message from such an amazing man, right? But Cindy Portier said, I said, how is it that older, and I don't think I use the word older, but I think I said, how is it that actors that have your body of work seem to be so nice and generous, why younger actors seem to be rather nasty and unfriendly? And he said, doesn't matter what you do in life, doesn't matter what your job is, you must know if acting is going to be your profession or whatever you do, you are representing that job. You are representing that company from which you work. So if you're mean and nasty, you are not representing yourself well, and you're not representing the industry well. So as an actor, you might think my job is acting, but my job really is to be the most gracious, kindest human being I can, because as an actor, you, the audience, can make or break me. And as actors, we must never forget that because the press edifies us as extra wonderful. They lift us up on pedestals as though we're more than what we are. And we must always tell ourselves we put our pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. And we need to realize that that person, like my friend Debbie, come up to him all the time. And if you're mean to them, they could just as easily blast you out into oblivion. And he said, nowadays it's even more important because there's this interesting little thing called the internet. And there are these wonderful little devices called cell phones, smartphones. And they have cameras, don't they? 
So if you're going to be mean and nasty and have a bad day, you need to hide yourself in a dark room, lock your doors, and vent. But make sure no one can hear you. I said, it's kind of like Sleeping Beauty when the good fairies want to use magic and they don't want Maleficent to know, isn't it? And he said, exactly. Exactly. 